So I'm headed back to Martha's Vineyard to see my mom. It's really, you know, back to the roots. I'm looking forward to seeing my mom. I'm not looking forward to y'all talking to my mom. Though. My mom is, is a character, we'll, we'll, we'll put it like that. So many memories go through my head, you know, from being with my mom, you know, from the hard things that I've been through in my life, you know, just a lot of heavy <laughs> going to visit where it all began. Now this, this is, this is a spot. So we're about to head down to the house where I got my first dog. I haven't been back here in years, so I wonder what it looks like. They're into plants here. I figured that out. My mom used to lock me out of the house. She'd be like, yo, be home at like 10 o'clock. And like, if I wasn't home at that time, she would just, <laughs> she would just lock all the doors. <laughs> I was like a little hippie skateboarder kid back in the day. I definitely had no clue, you know, that I was gonna be where I'm at now. You know, I figured I'd be a professional skateboarder and that would've been that. I barely ever saw my mom here. She worked like three jobs. She was just gone. So my mom was like super mom back in the day. When we didn't have shit, she made it look like we did. How I get so motivated, where I get this hustle from? My mom. You know, so my mom. Yeah, I was never allowed to have a dog and then my mom finally just folded. His name was Thunder. He was a black German shepherd. I got him when he was like eight weeks old. You know, and I remember being like, all right, this is my responsibility. I gotta take care of this guy. I didn't get my, the, my first pit bull until a while after that. Thunder was like three, four years old by the time I got Damon. But that's more for the next spot. Martha's Vineyard is significant to me because it's really you know, back to the roots, you know, back to really where this all started. So, you know, we had a day to you know, show the world some of the places where I really began before all the glory came to my life, you know, to see, see the true story, see how it really began, you know, the struggle. You know, you work hard, anything in life is possible. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to visit where it all began. Uh, Damon, that was the first pit bull that I ever had. One of my first, like, just real, real bonds with the dog. You know, you're talking, that was before General, before Cash, or before any of them. I used to just have the, uh, my two dogs, my dog Damon and my dog Thunder. That is when, like, I ended up having to leave the house that I was in and I had nowhere to go for the first time. H how I ended up homeless, like, it wasn't like I was, like, a bum. You know, I made the choice to be homeless. You know, it was give up your dogs or be homeless. It wasn't even an option. But just every day I was just searching for housing, trying to find, you know, somebody that would allow me to bring my dogs into a house. Normally you find like, you know, a couple of janky landlords. By the time I settled down, you know, I started getting into the mindset of like, I mean, you got two dogs, what's three? So I was stacking these dogs, so I was just putting myself in more of a position to be homeless again. My mom's general perception of what I was doing in the beginning, I don't think she was very fond of what I was doing. You know, your mom sees you like, choosing to be homeless to live around to her like just a bunch of dogs. She didn't believe in me in the beginning. Nobody did, but who would? I used to just come out here, hang out, you know, just be here for the day. I mean, work on a little dog training things with some of them, throw the ball for them, just exercise them. That was life for me, you know, it was just dogs, which it still is, so ain't changed. Do I know now that my mom is proud of me and everything that I have achieved? I mean, we've never really had that, like, direct conversation. This was one of the last houses that I found. I didn't live in this. I had nothing to do with this. The house that I lived in burned down. I was by myself at this point, too. Lisa wasn't around, no kids, nothing. It was just me and a ton of dogs. I was in a situation where I was finally comfortable and somebody didn't really mind that I had all these dogs, so, you know, I could keep kind of accumulating dogs. So that's what I kind of started doing there. I have like a lot of memories from that house. Bringing General home, I got him in this house. I just kind of became known as like the dog guy, you know what I mean? Which, it's ironic, that's still what I'm known today. I had a lot of summers here. I probably lived here for about four years, I think. Cue the house burning down. This is the last house that I lived in a market vineyard. I went to Atlanta and that whole scene happened and then I ended up back in, in Wareham. And that's actually where Lisa came into the fold. That's actually kind of where we met online. So I'm about to head to Falmouth. Uh, I'm about to go to Goodwill Park and meet up with my really good friend, Matt. We met Matt back around, I think like nine years ago now. And we started training together and everybody hit it off right away. Our families are super close. It's actually Jordan's uh, godparents. They'll always be very, very close friends of ours. 
I met Marlon, man. How many did you have? Eight, nine dogs? I think I had, at that point, yeah, maybe like 10 or so. That's crazy. Yeah. I know, him like no matter where he went, those dogs went with him, no matter what. Oh, Ooh, we were out there whatever. Kidding. All that slide's still there, though. Yeah. That's the slide I taught General to climb in like three and a half minutes. General is just like, he's like Yoda. I climb up the slide and he'll, it, that's all it really took and he's gonna come up. And then once he saw me do it once, he would, he would do it himself. I thought that that slide was gone. It was, a, it was a pleasant surprise to see it there still. He jumped all these signs. I used to have him jumping these signs and stuff and, and he was just a big dog. So for him to be able to jump like that. I remember that. You know, I think they still want to tell people no alcoholic beverages allowed. Oh man, brother. Good to see you, my guy. Absolutely, bro. So we're gonna go up the Cape now. We're gonna go up to Brewster to, you know, one of the, you know, pretty pivotal houses in my life. In this house, like, I literally remember having $72 in my bank account and being, realizing that I had a child on the way. I literally put every last ounce of my energy into taking the business to the next level. This is the house where Dark Dynasty Canines was born. The first time Lisa ever handled General was right in the backyard over here. That's where I really got into training with Marlon and he started training me and um, I did a lot of work with General at that point. The two of us kind of came together and that, that right there is what helped it you know, go to the next level. So I'm headed back to Martha's Vineyard to see my mom and just to kind of get some time with my mom. So we're gonna head out to Aquina. There's this little spot where you can go to. It really feels like, you know, the edge of the earth. We're gonna go out there and just enjoy ourselves, just relax. I'm looking forward to seeing my mom. I'm not looking forward to y'all talking to my mom though. My mom is, is a character, we'll, we'll, we'll put it like that. So, but I'm excited to see my mom. Look at that, oh. boom. I was like, I still like, I'm 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 when they do, they are, they are very close. He's always been into animals. Ah, man, I had a lot of them back then. And he was good, though. He always takes good care of his pets. Yeah? He does. The first day we moved to Martha's Vineyard, he went to school, he comes back, he goes, Mom, don't tell anyone I don't have a snake yet because everyone thinks I have a python. I said, okay, because it's going to take you a little while. Yeah, I was never allowed to have a dog. We didn't have a lot of money. I had two kids, a single mom, I working three jobs, so, the last thing I needed was a dog to add to it. Marlon was 13 years old when his dad got lung cancer. I decided maybe it'd be a good idea to get Marlon that dog, and we just deal with it, however it was. I was too old to be, be comforted, you know, by other things, so it was kind of like a comfort thing you know, for me. I was never allowed to have a dog, and then my mom finally just folded at that point and got me a dog. The fact that we got the first dog and I saw how good he was with him, I mean, he really was good, you know, and, and, and we got him right in time, you know, like we got him and literally, was it one week or two weeks after we got th brought Thunder home, Dad died. That dog was what he poured all his love and energy into. He was always looking around, you know, like, I need, I need someone to lead me. Who's going to lead my way? He's tough. He needed his real dad because his real dad was as tough as he is, but he didn't have that. And he was always looking, and finally I looked at him and I said, Marlon, you're a born leader. Look how everybody follows you around. Look how people are watching you. Just go forward, make your way, and look behind you and notice that people are following you and be a good leader. That's all. Do the right thing. I remember that for life. Do the right thing. All right. That stuck with me for a long time. That's because it's the truth. That's why it stuck with you. I got to tell you, Lisa's some kind of angel. The fact that she takes care of the kids and then wakes up every day and cleans up dog poop. But she grew up that way. She's a tomboy, and she grew up she grew up with snakes and snails and puppy dog so, tails I mean, too. So you pick the right wife. That's all I can say. I know. I know. I know. Nothing's changed in life. I know. Worth a lot of money and still still pick up poop. I know. Not many girls though. I'm gonna always show that. Yeah. Don't give up. I'm gonna learn to not give up. Yeah, don't give up. It's like kind of who he is, you know? It's who Marlon is. So every year, to end off the summer right, Martha's Vineyard has a really incredible fireworks show. So I think we're gonna try to get the family out, get the dog out, and 
Let's see if we can experience that. We'd walk and the kids would take the bus and we'd be sitting down waiting for the bus to come and as soon as the bus would pull up, all the girls, all the kids would stick their heads out the window and start yelling, it's Marlon, it's Marlon! He always was the entertainer. I don't know what it was. So many memories go through my head, you know, from being with my mom, you know, from the hard things that I've been through in my life, you know, people passing away. And it was really nice to see her, you know, on the island, just to experience some things with her together. It was kind of fun to let her experience the, the mob scene in my life. Are you proud of Mara? Are you kidding me? Yes. As a matter of fact, when I send him a text, I always say, love you. And what do I say at the end of that? It's about always saying it. Man. Love you proud. Love you proud. How could I not be proud of this guy? Look what he did. Look what he made. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. Everything that I am is what I learned from her. Thank you. I love you, man. So proud of you. Thank you for everything. I love my mom. I just I appreciate you more than I could ever put into words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, I trust you. Guys, can we just get one of you just standing next to each other as well? Mm -hmm. 